I want to thank Tree so much for hosting and of course South Sound Magazine. What an incredible event. And because part of my talk is pushing through fear and getting into that really uncomfortable place, I have to let you all know public speaking terrifies me. <laughs> so I am not up here just walking the talk. I am talking the walk with you all. <laughs> I was very fortunate. I knew at age five I wanted to be an artist. And my mother told me that I could be anything I wanted. If I wanted to be an artist, I could do that. I might have to work five times harder than anybody else, but that's okay. Don't let anybody steal your dreams. So I carefully hung my little watercolor paintings on the little white fence in our front yard, and the woman across the street bought them all for 75 cents. <laughs> I know, for me it was a big deal. So I want to thank all of you in the audience that have supported the arts and the artists because you have no idea what an impact that your gift can make. So thank you, everyone. I will never forget that 75 cents. <laughs> it's always been important to me to be able to use my artwork and my talents to make the world a better place. So there you go. Working in surgery for over 27 years, documenting over 6,500 different cases from life, was a wonderful way to blend my love of art and science, and more importantly, to be with the families in a time of crisis and help provide them with compassion and understanding when they're faced with life-threatening heart disease. As far as my studio work, I had my first solo show in 1977 at the University of Washington in the Women's Cultural Center and have since been in a, over a hundred different group or solo exhibitions. Go mom! <laughs> in, in 2004, I started working in the encaustic medium and I get to work with wax and resin and pigment and melt it all down with a blowtorch, which is wonderful. <laughs> And I was fortunate enough to have work in the International Encaustics Biennial in New York called Encaustics Work. And in 2016, I was one of 79 artists in North America selected to have their work published in the book Encaustic Art for the 21st Century. So isn't that cool? Yay! We can do it! We can do it! <laughs> So having work in the Tacoma Art Museum and corporate and private collections and having work in the getting a public commission for Pierce College and for hospitals has been incredibly rewarding. And 47 years after that white fence exhibition, I discovered another passion running, proving you are never too old to have a second childhood, ever. <laughs> so it started with my girlfriend nagging me to run. And I had all the logical reasons why I couldn't. It's my knees, it's my hips, it's my age. You must be nuts, look at me. And, but her nagging was relentless. And I started with three minutes on a treadmill, and I thought I would die. <laughs> Barely. I thought, this is ridiculous. But you know, if you can do something for three minutes, you can do it for four. And over six months, I slowly built up to a half mile, a mile, and then 300 miles on a treadmill. I ran my, my, a four-mile race in 2010. And as Lisa said, over 210 races, including the 10-mile race for a soldier this past Sunday. Yay! <laughs> I ran my first marathon four years ago and have since run 21 and a 50K. So that was cool. 
You know, running is my best time for creative thinking. It's really, it settles down my mind, and there's so many lessons that I have learned from running that really help me in my artwork and my life. And it's become my inner coach, that my go-to place when I hit really difficult times, so I wanted to share them with you. First thing, you have to expect great things from yourself before you can do them. Dream big, dream really big, dream those big, vast dreams, and if they don't scare you, they're not big enough. Visualize them, hold on to them, and just like Emily, if your dream is to get to the Boston Marathon, you can get yourself to the finish line. Yay! Woohoo! The next thing is, if your dreams aren't worth fighting for, they're not worth having. There is no way around it. You have got to do the work. You have got to get yourself to the start line in order to run the race. Limits belong on road signs, not in your life. <laughs> your blessing is outside the comfort zone. It's in that place of challenge that we get the growth and we get the strength. And never forget the power of just putting one foot in front of another. It can take you to places you never ever dream possible. The race doesn't always go to the swift, but to the ones that keep running. Doing the little things over and over, paying attention to the details, and not giving up. That's what we need to do. Then I have, yay, okay. <laughs> You know, there's also, life happens, and I paint when I have no words, and I run to find them. Let's face it, we all have moments in life that we get stopped in our tracks. We get a devastating phone call, and we get unexpected and unwanted news. How do we move through emotional paralysis? For me, it's really good self-care, and I paint. When I create, I can get emotions out that I can't even find words for. And when I run, my mind quiets down, and I'm able to find language to wrap around the situation. I found by motivating the body to move, you encourage your mind to embrace life. And the next thing I learned is to watch for the blue line. <laughs> now, I ran. <laughs> there are those marathoners in here that know what that's about. Well, I didn't know what that was about. So I ran the Chicago Marathon last year, and it was, for me, scorching hot. So I did the logical thing, and I noodled to the shaded side of the street any time I could. And I made my time goal for 26.2 miles, the length in a marathon. But I still had over a mile to run in the race. <laughs> Good, huh? Smart. And that's when I learned the blessing of the blue line. It's painted on the road to keep you exactly on course for 26.2 miles. So a month after Chicago, here is somebody happily running on that blue line. <laughs> And all through life, we have people that are there to support us, no matter how far we stray. Sometimes they're people we know, others just like Emily. They're the ones that pick us up at the finish line and haul us in the medical tent. <laughs> but be mindful and grateful to everyone that's there on your journey to support you. So to sum it up, dream big, do the work, the blessing is outside of your comfort zone. Take small steps 
relentlessly. Obstacles are going to be there. Just keep pushing forward and hold a place of kindness and compassion for others and especially for yourself. Yeah. <laughs>